and then <clears throat> we are going live on Facebook. We'll give that a moment. Do its thing. All right, so uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, Brian, if folks are joining while I'm talking, just go ahead and let them in. Um, hopefully you all don't hear the bell in the background as I'm speaking. <laughs> all right, so uh, welcome everyone to our monthly North Sky Business Luncheon. My name is Felicia Perry. I am the executive director of the West Broadway Business and Area Coalition. I am currently turning my phone on do not disturb, which is something I suggest everyone does, especially if you're one of our panelists or presenters, um, <laughs> so that that doesn't interrupt uh, today's uh, event or luncheon or meeting. Um, so yeah, so the Northside Business Luncheons are monthly events that are hosted and par we partner with uh, NEON, which is the Northside Economic Opportunity Network. And I see Warren, uh, their president is on the line. Uh, Warren, I'll give you um, a moment after I speak if you wanna offer any updates from NEON, we're happy to have you here. Uh, but WBC and NEON, we partner each month to put together these uh, monthly gatherings. They're for networking and sharing of information. We have various topics each month and we provide lunch to folks from our local restaurants and caterers in Minneapolis. And so, as I said before, the West Broadway Business and Area Coalition, along with NEON, put these together in order to better support our membership and clients um, in their journey through entrepreneurship and business ownership. Um, and <clears throat> West Broadway Business and Area Coalition our mission is to create an inviting and vital uh, West Broadway corridor and to transform the North Side into a thriving economic community. Um, so much of the work of NEON aligns with that. And so we're really happy to work together with them on an ongoing basis in this work. So um, without further ado, oh, uh, one last thing. I did want to let everyone know to stay on at the end. I have just a couple quick like announcements and information for folks on how you can stay connected to the work and some of the imp information that, that is presented today. And if you have not already, make sure that you register on the Eventbrite so that you can be added to our email list and we will be sending out resources and information and answering any last minute questions uh, to folks who attend and register for these meetings. So um, without further ado, I think what I'll first do is pass it on to Warren in case he had any announcements he wanted to make on the NEON side. If not, oh, it looks like his mic is off. Warren, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Felicia. Um, I just want to say welcome to everyone. Um, glad you're here. We're certainly looking forward to all the uh, presentations and the information uh, be shared today. Um, I really don't have any, I mean, there's a lot going on in Neon, so I don't want to spend any time on that right now, but uh, glad to see you all here and uh, and welcome. And we're just excited about um, our partnership and uh, and again, the information that will be shared today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Warren. Thank you. All right, well then, Brian, you can go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much, Felicia. Uh, welcome to everyone today. It's, uh, I'm happy to see you. Uh, it's always a good day for me when all my presenters are here on time and ready to go. Um, we've got a lot of information to get through the day, a lot of exciting things happening on the north side of Minneapolis. Uh, and we want you all to know, hear about all of the many new developments, as well as uh, the plans for the new light rail that's going to be coming through uh, North Minneapolis. Uh, well, today we have some exciting uh, speakers that will provide some updates on the developments around the North Minneapolis area. And we have two very, uh, very qualified people to provide information on, on the blue line. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a, a real quick introduction of the people who will be speaking today. And, uh, and we'll I'll actually bring them on in the order that I provide their name. 
Uh, first, we're going to hear from our, our, our developers uh, from the north side. We're going to get some updates, uh, three to five minute updates from those who uh, have uh, uh, very exciting uh, developments taking place around uh, the, the North Minneapolis area. Uh, first, we're going to hear from Ian Alexander. Uh, then we'll hear from Brett Buckner, uh, then Jamil Ford. And last but not least, we'll hear from Kenya McKnight Ahad uh, in that order. Uh, uh, and before I uh, uh, start that process, I also want to introduce our, our, our Blue Line uh, Extension panelists for today. Uh, we have Sophia with us today, Sophia Guinness, who is the Manager of Public Involvement uh, for the Transit System Development uh, with the Met Metropolitan Council. Also, we have Nick Landwehr, who is the Blue Line Extension Design and Engineer Lead, uh, also with the Metropolitan Council. Would you two please wave your hands if you're out there, please? Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, before we hear from them, let's let's go back to our north side updates, uh, and we'll first be hearing from Ian Alexander. Ian, the floor is yours. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I'm here today to talk about a project that um, uh, my team is working on. It's the Resolute. It's over at the corner of Gerard and West Broadway, where the uh, abandoned um, Pizza and Wings location is now. Um, I will, I'm going to bring the pictures right up so that you don't have to look at me. Um, so let me, uh, let me do this, share content, photos. Seems to almost be self-explanatory, okay. So I'm going to um, share with you a few of our photos of this project. One, two, three, four, okay. Okay, so let me know if you have this up in front of you. Just there. Yes. Okay. So um, this is not the main picture, but this is a view looking actually toward West Broadway. So the project is called, let's go here to the main picture. The project is called the Resolute. It is a mixed, um, it is a mixed housing uh, commercial mixed use building. It uh, has four main commercial tenants on the first floor and on uh the first floor, it has a mezzanine for those tenants. And then on floors, um, uh, I guess I'll say three through seven, it is, uh, it is housing. And the units range from studios to three bedroom units. And at 70 to 71, we're still figuring it out, um, units of housing altogether. It is uh, mixed income. It ranges from 40% AMI to 80% AMI. Um, for the units. And um, the building is, has a very nice facade. It's brick. Um, I think there's another type of um, facade in there somewhere, but it has a nice, uh, uh, on the top floor, it has a, um, a balcony that overlooks the city skyline. And the best part about the building is the building has um, four tenants where we're going to be conduing them out. So they'll have ownership. There will, there will be a daycare uh, on the um, first floor towards the back of the building. There will be a hair salon and barber on the uh, front of the building with the mezzanine. And there will be a, a little tiny coffee shop. And there will be a, um, a, a small bar um, and uh, appetizer type bar on the first floor. Um, and so it is a a great building. All of the individuals who will be on the first floor have north side connections or they live in north. And um, and three of the four tenants are people of color. Um, and it's a, it's a great project. We're excited. We're hoping to break ground. Originally, we're hoping to break ground by the end of this year. But with the way financing is lining up, it looks like we may start either at the end of the year or early next year. And we're building this entire building with um, insulated concrete forms. So it is, um, it is basically going to be a brick, concrete, and steel building. So it's a pretty strong building. Um, it's, uh, I think it looks very nice. And it has a lot of open space for the community to, um, to be present in. So with that, I could keep talking. But I think maybe if anyone has any questions, we could go that route too, depending on your perspective. You, you know, today we're just going to be providing updates, Ian, but we, we okay. thank you for being open to taking sure. questions. Uh, maybe in the near future, we'll provide an avenue for people to ask additional questions. 
Sure, that's fine. That's that's the basics on the building and the basics on the project, and we're uh, we're looking forward to breaking ground soon, and um, we're excited about it. Very very exciting time. Thank you, Ian, for that update. Uh, next, we'll hear from Mr. Brett Buckner. Uh, thank you, thank you, Brian, and good to see everybody. Uh, Brett Buckner uh, here on behalf of a community effort called Seeds to Harvest, that's working in partnership with the Minneapolis Park and Rec to recreate North Commons. 26 acres, just to bring some people up to speed. I know some people have heard this um, spiel before, but for those who have not heard, we're gonna redesign the complete park of North Commons. 26 acres of new land that will basically pull everything together. And thank you, Felicia, for shouting out the crew. Um, it will have a new community center at uh, three levels, two, one below ground, two above ground. So it's gonna be a very new look for a, a facility, a, a park uh, that will actually have some amazing um, activities within it. Connected will be a field house of at least four, uh, uh, four, four courts and be able to have space for large community events that take place from there. A new aquatic center that would incorporate the um, a new water slide as well as some lap pool activity and the pushes to have year round swimming. So again, as we know, doesn't stay too warm up here. We would like to be able to use the pool 365 days a year. And then also new parking um, um, amenities uh, to make sure that we don't uh, funnel into the community as well. And this will be the first phase. Uh, so right now we, um, Seeds of Harvest, is uh, beginning to work with the Minneapolis Park Foundation to put together not only the uh, additional funding package, we have support from the state of Minnesota uh, to the tune of uh, $5 million to get things going and already have additional $2 million. So uh, the, us and the um, Park Foundation is working hard to secure the remainder of the first phase monies, which would be about uh, $18 million as a, as projected right now. And we're really excited because we believe through our activities um, at the at the new center, we'll have about three to 4,000 people come into North Minneapolis every weekend to participate in event activities. So when we hear events such as Ian's and with the new bar and, and, and restaurant uh, to be able to provide uh, people to eat, we're gonna be looking for not only that, but a lot more in order to take care of our um, collective needs. So we're really excited to be a part of this conversation. Um, Felicia, Brian, thanks for the invite. Warren, looking forward to talking with you again. And uh, we'll just keep going from there. Thank you, Brett. Having having graduated from Minneapolis North and grew up in the, on the North side, played many games and, uh, of ball in that park. So I'm excited about what's taking place over there. Uh, thank you, thank you again, Brett. Uh, next, we'll hear from uh, Mr. Jamil Ford. You're on mute, Jamil. We can't. Yeah, it looks like you're on mute. I'm, you're on mute I was on mute. Oh, man. You gotta start all over. You gotta start all gotta over. Start all over. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and do this all over. Um, my name is Jamil Ford, the owner of uh, Mobilized Design and Architecture. Uh, we believe in bringing beauty, dignity, and value through architecture and design. I'm also um, serving as the president of Ideal Development Group, which will be the developer for Baldwin Square Development. Uh, this site is located. Uh, just north of uh, North Minneapolis, uh, 42nd and Fremont. Um, trying to see how I can get to the next page here. Um, the overall development is slightly under 25,000 square feet. Uh, there'll be three levels of uh, development. Uh, more specifically, um, the uh, second floor will have uh, office space and co-working space uh, tied together uh, with one uh, entity uh, fo solely focusing around uh, shared support, such as like a recep shared receptionist. Uh, we'll also have an on-site bookkeeper that, that further supports local businesses that are officing out of that space. And then there'll also be some uh, shared 
uh, co-working space that will be managed and um, uh, uh, developed with uh, Neighborhood Development Center, uh, NDC. Um, as you can sort of see here, uh, it's basically right in the middle of the Mississippi River and uh, Theater Work Parkway. Um, the main floor and the lower level will be uh, a restaurant out of the DMV area that will be coming to town. And um, we're looking forward to having a restaurant, bookstore, cafe, um, multi-purpose uh, black box theater. In the lower level, we'll have some shared integrated space that connects the art gallery to the uh, black box theater. So you're not um, standing in line. So there'll be some pre and post functions uh, opportunities to grab some wine and a few things like such. Um, because this is an old street line, streetcar uh, line on Fremont, we wanted to create more of the old nostalgia and architecture of that era. And so we'll be preserving a lot of the original brickwork on the front facade. Towards the rear, you can see it's pretty dilapidated. And um, we'll be adding about 8,000 square feet on the rear of the building. Um, the other aspect, this rendering will be changing, but there'll be a balcony also off of the back end of this building. But the big thing that you see here is a lot of sunlight. And so during the early hours of uh, the morning, you'll have a lot of uh, natural daylight penetrating into the building. Um, this here is 42nd Avenue and in Fremont. There'll be a uh, parking that's uh, on the the east side of the building. Then we'll also have some integrated, um, uh, we'll have uh, the access for uh, valet services uh, during major events. And then we'll also have some shared parking uh, directly tied to the church, just um, to the east of this property. Uh, overall, in terms of schedules, um, we are anticipating a uh, summer construction schedule. Uh, right now, we are finalizing some of our commitments back to uh, the state of Minnesota and our commitments around um, the funding that's coming out of the bonding bill as of last year. Uh, we also have uh, 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 proceeds coming in from Hennepin County, uh, Met Council, as well as the city of Minneapolis. Um, I will defer any questions um, moving forward, uh, just to respect time. But thank you. Thank you, Jamil. Uh, again, another exciting project uh, for the North Minneapolis community. Um, last but not least, we have Kenya McKnight Ahad, who will provide an update on her development. Kenya, the floor is yours. Hi, Brian. Um, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, having me here. Uh, Kenya McKnight Aha, president and founder of the Black Women's Wealth Alliance and uh, new owner of the Zara. So our project is, uh, we're currently in the uh, pre-development phase. Uh, we're wrapping that up where we have secured uh, probably like 60% of the funding financing needed for the project and currently working through the final phase of financing, which we're really excited about. Uh, to acquire the property at 1200 West Broadway, uh, the building where uh, Breaking Bread is, is in, uh, and a building we're a former tenant of. We leased that space space in there for the last three years. So it's really excited to, exciting to come back to uh, now be an owner uh, of the building and to you know, uphold many of the businesses that are there that are black owned, uh, including Appetite for Change or Breaking Bread and a couple other businesses in there that really um, have the you know, uh, commitment to stay long-term. Our goal with that is uh, really to create an environment for black women entrepreneurs. I am a black woman entrepreneur um, myself, but also to create a platform for women in the health and wellness, uh, in the beauty sector, more so the health and wellness areas of that, as that is a strong growing base of business owners that we encounter a lot. Uh, those who are making products from you know, shea butters to soaps to massage therapists to uh, nutritionalists and herbalists and those who work in the spa settings, et cetera. So our goal with that building, if you know, the building has three components to it. There's an office area, 
Uh, there's a commercial kitchen setup area, and then there's the actual restaurant. With the restaurant, the goal is to maintain it um, as a way to, you know, definitely support appetite for change uh, as their aspirations to stay there for a long time. So we want to, you know, bring the restaurant to a more upscale uh, physical environment, um, and that would allow more capacity for folks to be there. So we will be expanding the building. Uh, we also intend to build a lab space for Black women to actually create their products there, not just the commercial kitchen, but a lab for folks to create their incense, their herbs, their butters, et cetera. That is definitely missing in our community to support these entrepreneurs. And last but not least, our goal is to build a uh, salon suites. Uh, suites, so we're, we will be expanding uh, the office area, um, including uh, 20 suites for Black women entrepreneurs on the first floor and building a spa, a mini day spa on the second floor, as well as the retail store that hosts products of uh, Black women that are created by Black women entrepreneurs. And so that is really, and, and then also a shared uh, center for um, yoga, meditation, you know, all those sort of services that Black women in that space also provide. So that's, it'll be uh, really a cultural healing center, if you will, uh, space, but it's, you know, run by Black women entrepreneurs where you can come and get services that range from doula services, um, you know, to massages, to spa treatments, you know, to herbal care, to nutritional support, et cetera. And so that is, you know, what we're creating or really we're building on the energy and uh, entrepreneurial you know, efforts of Black women in that space anyway. That's what they're doing. We're just creating an environment for to live in and to give our community access to um, this in a more direct way that's here rather than us going outside to get these same services we already pay for. So that's what our goal is. And again, uh, we released actually an RFP for our design next week. Uh, we decided to take that approach so that we can attract the best talent uh, to helping us design this beautiful building, uh, the Zara is what it's called. And uh, we are also building a council of Black women entrepreneurs who represent the industry to help guide the development design, uh, community impact, and overall benefits and potential co-ownership of the building. So that's our update. I'll keep you uh, posted. We should uh, know within the next, uh, probably by mid-May, if we actually uh, were approved for financing, which looks really good for us, but once it is, it's on and popping and we'll reach out and keep the community engaged. And we want you to know that you're very much on this with us as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kenya, for those updates. Um, you know, we had other, other developments on the North side that were, for various reasons were not able to be here. Uh, we will do our best to provide additional information as that information comes into the community. Uh, so uh, let's, let's give all our presenters a hand today for being a part. Uh, and providing those updates on the exciting things that are taking place on the north side. Thank you, thank you so much. Ryan, can I just say that I, I'm, I'm, I'm like one of very few black women uh, developers in this space. So I, I just I just wanna acknowledge that like, in, on the north side, there's not a lot, but I'm one of many and I we hope to grow more um, black women uh, developers who are owning and building commercial spaces over here. Um, you're one, but definitely you won't be the last, that's for sure. Thank you so much, Kenya. Uh, at this time, we'll, we're going to transition right in um, to our updates on the Metro Blue Line extension. Uh, uh, again, we have with us Sophia Guinness, who is the manager of public involvement with the transit system development as part of the Metropolitan Council, and Nick Landwehr, who is the Blue Line extension design and engineer lead also with the Met Metropolitan Council. Uh, Sophia and Nick, the floor is yours at the moment to provide updates. Thank you. And let me get up the project map so folks can see that. Everybody can see my screen? Yep. Yes, we can. Awesome. So in March of this year, the project staff released proposed options for the Blue Line extension. And the project uh, starts out in Target Field and continues all the way to Oak Grove in Brooklyn Park. And you know, we are in the phase right now where we are seeking feedback on is this right? You know, do we did we include everything that needs to be included? And throughout the next year, we will be advancing that conversation to 
hopefully by the end of 2021, coming to a, a community supported alignment. And in area three, we have a few options that we're considering and obviously still seeking feedback on. And it, primarily those are Lowry and West Broadway. And then there's a, a section of links coming off of Target Field that would be options to connect that we'll also be exploring and diving deeper into. So right now we have, they're kind of lines on a map, right? They're just kind of, you know, uh, very, very basic pieces. But throughout this next year, we want to show what that could look like. We want to engage in very specific conversations about uh, intersections and station locations and uh, pedestrian connections and really get into, you know, we, we heard a lot about, you know, different developments and this is a different kind of a development, right? This is ex expanding our transportation infrastructure uh, and bringing a different, that kind of benefit. So really, really kind of getting into it, there'll be, uh, throughout the year, we will be bringing more detail and more information and always having an opportunity to give feedback and help us refine and develop the project. Specifically, we'll also have two kind of points in the year that people can, if they want to focus their energies around, they can. So right now we're kind of in route release. We'll also have a draft report that will kind of begin to show those cross sections. What does it look like in the road? Kind of how all that works, our proposed station locations. And then working with project goals, starting to weigh the, the benefits and impacts of all of those so people can really make informed decisions on our pathway forward. We'll get a bunch of feedback on that. And we'll also then have a final, a final report uh, that will be final draft report that will also be available for comment. And that will kind of give us to end of the year. Now, uh, kind of some of the, I think, questions that people brought up is just when we get to a community support alignment, doesn't mean that we're ready for construction. To get this project under construction, we're looking at a minimum of three years, maybe even more to that four to five time frame range. And, and kind of all the pieces that in that is if even when we have kind of a community supported route to advance, we'll need to be cleared uh, federally in our environmental process. We'll need to develop construction ready designs. We'll need to bid the project uh, and uh, we will there's one more thing then and we'll and we'll need to ha seek we municipal know. consent from our cities so getting uh, basically going to all of the city councils along the around the route and basically getting their endorsement for the project itself so many pieces to kind of come together as we start to advance into those years and get closer to construction talking specifically about construction impacts and how to uh, how to, how that'll all work will be something that we will want to engage all of you on in, very, in a lot of detail. And you know that includes uh, something, you know, construction phasing. So we wouldn't want to block access to businesses or uh, not make it so that pedestrians can access stores. So how phasing might work on a roadway so that things are open and still accessible. You know, construction is always messy, but still, uh, still considering all those pieces and then you know we we have some uh, examples of, of business support during construction, like the Central Corridor Funders Collaborative, and we would hope to expand that and improve upon that, so that by the time we got to construction, we would have a, a full plan for business support that have, that would be multifaceted. So that is all kind of kind of would be uh, things that we would step forward on. I, um, also, want to because uh, uh, I got this question beforehand. Kind of thinking about local contractors and the community being involved in construction. Uh, the Met Council has a, both a workforce development program that thinks about prior to construction helping people get into the construction trades. And then also, you know, usually on these projects, we often have a the kind of like a prime, prime contractor that manages the whole thing, but then there are subcontractors and we have um, for uh, disadvantaged business enterprises, DBEs, there are, there's goals, and we would try to be probably a pretty aggressive in, in those numbers to make sure that a lot of local folks are, are involved directly in construction. So that is a super high level overview of what we have. We know we want to have a lot more very specific in-depth conversations. My contact information is in chat for folks that might want to follow up afterwards. And folks can also visit a bluelineext.org, our website. There's multiple ways to give feedback right now. We have an interactive map, a survey open, and I always like a phone call or email as well directly. 
And I'll jump in here too. Thanks, Sophia. And 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 I'll I'll let if if you need to contact me, I'm I'm happy to talk with anybody. But it's best to get a hold of Sophia because she'll she'll make sure that your 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 questions or comments are, are are sent to the appropriate person. So you know if it's design, engineering related, construction related, it'll it'll, it'll probably come to me. So help it. But I I just want to reiterate as we go forward here that that uh, Sophia already said it. These are lines on a map that, that uh, we, were, we, we brought forward because as, as early on as we were beginning the community outreach, people were saying, hey, we need to see something to react to. And so based on our project principles of, 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 of limiting disruption to residents and businesses, and, and, and by that, you know, we, we tried to lo look at locations that were through routes and, and, uh, and had the wide enough right away in, in the area to put the, the, the alignments in and, and, and actually you know, connected to somewhere weren't all broken up. So that's what these are based on off of. They are really for, to, to start that conversation, to get comments, to get the input from folks to say, we don't like this, or hey, this is good. Can you look at this though? Uh, or maybe we did miss something in, in here and, and, and the community is saying, hey, have you considered this route and let's have that discussion. So we're at that point right now, there is nothing done or baked here. These are lines on a map, not a lot of engineering done, but we want to, to, to have that conversation and, and then start diving more into it. And then as Sophia says, after this phase is, is then when we'll go into probably two year, at least two years of engineering, uh, if, if there's a community supported alignment here, it would it, it'd be another two years of engineering before we'd even get to the construction side of things. So we're, we're a ways out. Thank you so much for providing those updates. Um, at this time, we're going to open the, the, the chat up to questions uh, that you may have for Nick or Sophia. Um, I, I do have one question. Um, when, when, you, when you talk about uh, community engagement and, and community agreement, uh, what, what, what does that look like? Is that like where, where the community is signing off on it? Or, you know, what, what, what type of uh, input are you expecting from the community that will impact this decision? So there's there's two, there's two pieces. And I think it's what what does community engagement look like? That's a, kind of the big question there. And uh, we want to have very, very robust community engagement and really talk to, I like to talk about anybody. If you abut our alignment uh, or a potential route, like I, I actually want to talk to you directly. So it is you know, we have um, advisory committees. Many of our panelists today are actually on our community or business advisory committee. And, uh, and getting some of this first cut of information that we're putting together and really uh, revi revising and, and tweaking. And then, you know, we wanna talk to, at, we wanna be out at groups, uh, talking to them, listening, uh, pulling back in the feedback. And we, we want what we hear to have our engineering team, our planning team to, evaluate and respond to. We really take a lot of direction uh, it from, from, the, from the community. And it's, it's the big group conversation and it's the small group conversation. So just uh, the project staff, as well as uh, we have a community cohort, a community engagement cohort, we wanna get deep into the community, come where people are, talk about every single little detail that there are. You know, there's, there's questions that are broad and affect everybody. And then there'll be questions that are very specific to a location and might make sense you know, for, have a, for a smaller group that's particularly interested or impacted by that to, to talk with us. So we want a lot of community engagement. We want a lot of in-depth conversation. And it's a conversation that evolves as we get more information, as we respond to questions that people are bringing up or, or things that folks need from us. And uh, kind of what does a community supported alignment look like? And it's a kind of it's kind of a gray question in the sense that you know with a big light rail project like this you can't make every single person you know happy uh, you know there's there's folks that just fundamentally don't like light rail or or whatever but it's you know when most of us can come together and say this is a benefit to the community we see it bringing uh, positive impact both for the community that's there and for the, the traveling public as a major transit investment. Um, and you know, also then if you think of our city, city partners, we want all of our cities on board um, because it's very difficult to work with uh, a municipality if, if people aren't, aren't supportive. So 
to the extent possible coming to to consensus uh, on that on that benefit. Thank you so much. Uh, any additional questions at this time for our panelists? I have a, a question from Christian Eldridge. She said, is Metro Transit investing in affordable housing along this light rail? Sure, so as we look at the overall project, we kind of see uh, four different buckets. One is kind of our project evaluation, the planning pieces. We have the actual like engineering, and then we have this bucket that we call community, community benefits. And in that we're looking at a whole um, kind of uh, holistic, kind of beyond the rails in a sense, uh, to use that term, stealing from my county partners, um, that looks at um, anti-displacement needs, uh, how you fully leverage the investment. And uh, we don't necessarily have a full plan together and we would need to work with the community very heavily uh, on that topic. We're, we're working towards convening a group that specifically uh, looks at that piece and, and really is centered in the work that the community is already doing. And that group would be in conjunction with the project, but outside of the project. So, you know, it, it's, it's not, it's working with us, not for us. <laughs> so. Hey, thank you so much. Um, I, I uh, see a question about targeted residents too here, uh, uh, Brian. Are, are targeting residents in the neighborhood for, for, for I guess, contractors and, and stuff. And, and, and I can answer that a little bit too. You know, we'll have, uh, as we move forward, we're gonna have more of an engineering contract that we're gonna have to go out for, for bid for or an RFP for. And, and I, I can see in that, you know, there, there, there are goals that they need to meet for, for, for DB and, and, and other uh, things within that contract. You know, currently I think it's about 19% in those projects, but you know, those keep getting reevaluated and, and, and that measure keeps going up. But I think also as we're putting that together, we can put some, 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 some effort into the RFPs going out to, to, to contact and, and use, use resources from the community a little bit better, you know, what, whatever it is, if it's surveying or, or, or engineering or, or utilities or architecture, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of opportunities I think that we can really hit and, and I'll be one of the folks that'll probably be putting together that RFP. So I, we will look at that. And that, that is important to have, to us to have that community input. And, and the same way, construction's oh, a ways you. off, but <laughs> but that construction, we will we do focus on that also. And and, and we'll also focus, I, I, I don't know if, if, if Sophia brought that up. We'll also start working and focusing on, on training, jobs training too, to, to get folks skilled so you know, so they can, you know, be the carpenters and electricians and and steel workers and 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 um, masons that that we're going to need when we get into construction because that will be important to have that labor force. Thank you. Uh, we have a, a question from Facebook. Benjamin uh, Broughton wants to know: Would stations be at grade, or could we have them elevated or below grade? Also, when will the draft report? When will the draft report be completed? Okay, I, I can start with that. I, I, as, as we initially look at alignments, we're looking at at grade alignments, at grade uh, center running uh, functions the best for our operations and really for for the, for the users. At, at, at grade, it's convenient and easy to get the stations for people of all abilities. You're not having to get in an elevator that may or may not be working or go up and down stairs or you know, a lot of places will have escalators in this weather and climate. Escalators really don't work at all. They're, they're you know, more of a nuisance, but you know, so, so we really wanna be part of the community, be that, that, that stitching that helps things together and the place to go to and from. Uh, and, and, and so at grade center running is best, but if, if, if we can't do that, then we will start looking at other options. But you know, the, the initial blush is really for initial convenience to our customers, to operations, um, you know, the, it is project cost, the, the, the construction, but also, you know, when we start doing tunnels or bridges and stuff, there, there's a lot of really, uh, the, the expensive, the, the maintenance and everything starts to, to get different levels of magnitude more expensive, so. And to the, to the second question of kind of when to expect the draft report, um, we, we would expect that kind of, 
in our schedule, we had kind of had it a little bit earlier in the year, but we're wanting to actually bring out more of the pieces that'll be in it uh, to kind of talk about first before it's kind of like officially in the report. So kind of that late summer, early fall is I think where we're now targeting our, our draft report and hoping to have the community basically see a lot of those pieces even before there's the draft report. But, you know, so that we're not this like constant trickle of things to pay attention to then also having that very specific point in time that uh, people have to focus their attention and add comment if, that, if that's what works best for folks. So if you really wanna get live the project, I will uh, uh, have continued conversations, but then also those, very, those points in time that you can direct efforts. Uh, we have a question from KB Brown. Uh, how will the building of this line help or hurt the micro businesses in the community? Sure. So that's a that's a complex question. In a lot of a lot of ways, we don't know fully at this point. But what we do know is that um, light rail is often a very uh, positive to business. Right? You have folks that are coming to stations, uh, wanting you're know, walking by businesses. Uh, they become station areas that become you know very desirable um, places, and you know just even. Um, for, for, for the workforce coming, coming to work, uh, you know, can also utilize that to expand. Um, you know, with that, we wanna make sure that, you know, that the, during construction, um, that we think about our small businesses and those impacts, uh, you know, you don't have, uh, sometimes not universally, but if you, know, you have uh, the cash flow, you know, you wanna make sure if, if you're more sensitive to that, thinking about how to make sure that the, the impacts of the project um, are don't don't ca carry through right that we're, we're that we're thinking about them and addressing them before we get to the various various stages where they might become impactful so that overall the project can be a, a benefit to to folks okay uh, we had an earlier question and you spoke to this uh, privately Sophia but maybe we should elaborate on it a little bit more uh, Jake Akravac, and I apologize, Jake, if I messed up your last name. Jake wants to know, he was wondering if there's space to extend the online community survey deadline to the end of May. Um, yes, uh, we are We are uh, already doing that. So I, um, I, I think I need to update it on the website as well. The, the new date is basically May 28th, so almost the end of the month, but uh, just giving us a little bit of time to turn things around for some of our advisory committees. So through, through May 28th, uh, people are able to provide comment. We just we want to recognize that there is a lot going on in the world right now uh, that is gra uh, grabbing people's attention. So uh, ex extending, uh, fully extending that. And I'd also really want to emphasize, even when we close the survey, it won't be the end of public comment. Basically, all that we'll be doing is updating the conversation. So bringing in some of those new pieces of information that our engineers have been working on and kind of updating that question. Um, so. You know, if, if people for some reason don't have time to engage uh, in kind of the first round, we we would we want to offer many op more opportunities to connect uh, before we get to the community supported alignment. Okay. Um, and, and just for the record, I, I see many of us are getting questions about our development. Uh, we will provide answers to those. Uh, we'll follow up via email and provide questions, uh, answers to those questions. Primarily right now, we're trying to focus on questions for the, our Blue Line panelists. So just want to let you know, those of you who are asking questions about the development, see them and we will make sure uh, we direct them to the developers to get uh, answers. But as of right now, we're just trying to focus on, on questions for the Blue Line. Uh, are there any other questions for our panelists today? And for my co-workers working behind the scenes, did I miss any questions from anyone concerning uh, the blue line. Um, I just, there's one here. Um, oh, maybe I should bring my face up. Uh, so there's a question here. Um, how is Met Council and the county preparing to, how are you all preparing to support businesses that are already experiencing the impacts of COVID-19, uh, historic racism, the uprising, um, and disparities, um, you know, amongst that. And so uh, that is, those designations are all along West Broadway and throughout North Minneapolis. And so we're wondering what you all are doing to prepare 
um, and, and to be able to support. What resources do you have available? Are you bringing forward? Sure, and uh, uh, our county folks could do the best of answering part of that question because there's multiple efforts right now uh, to kind of uh, handle this or provide business support during during COVID-19 that the county has initiated. And uh, Nick and I probably aren't the most qualified to, to go into a detail about, about those efforts. Uh, we can definitely have our county counterparts uh, follow up with with uh, some of that some of that answer. And uh, to, to the second part of the question, um, I, I would say the project team overall, when we think of the project itself, reducing regional racial disparities and, and actually tackling that question is a paramount to us. And so part of what we're thinking about in terms of the overall funding for the project is, is are, are those pieces and how to address them. It's not all baked, it's not all in line, but it is uh, it essential for the project and we will wanna have additional conversations with the community as, as that is developed. Okay, I have a question from Rachel McNamara. Uh, her question is, what is your approach to engaging current transit use users along the corridor? For example, if they aren't able to attend conversations such as, such as this, but will be impacted? Sure, uh, so Metro Transit, uh, our, one of our number one priorities, right, is our existing customers and the people that ride with us, especially those that have continued to ride with us during COVID-19. And reaching and talking to our transit users, especially as we you know, think of wh where we overlap with existing bus routes is, is one of our major stakeholder group. And so um, we, we would like to do a lot of in-person outreach when it comes to that. So kind of getting on, uh, there's a little bit of social distancing stuff with buses, but as things kind of uh, loosen up a little bit, actually getting on the buses with surveys, standing at transit, busy transit stops and talking to our riders, uh, engaging some of the ways that Metro Transit talks to our riders right now. So through rider alerts, our kind of Metro Transit newsletters, riders club, um, variety of things, but basically very much a priority. Hey, uh... Are there any other questions at this time? I see council member uh, Shambliss also just kind of uh, add, add a little bit more to Sophia's on the working group uh, that, that they will also uh, be, be addressing um, uh, impacts from, from, from construction projects on, on, on the communities and, and displacement. And, and so, so that, that will be, uh, to discuss historical racial disparities of transportation projects. So that will be part of the, the work, the group that, that Sophia mentioned before that's being formed to work with the project and, and the community. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, go, go ahead, please. Uh, the, the, the other thing that I'll add as far as resources for folks is um, West Broadway Business and Area Coalition is a resource. Um, the organization is a part of the community engagement cohort. Ourselves, along with several other um, organizations and entities in uh, across the community, are part of that engagement cohort. We're doing what we can on the WBC side to connect with some of those other orgs, but you can you'll find things coming from Juxtaposition Arts. I want to say Jordan Neighborhood, uh, Harrison. Um, others that um, that are not coming to me right now, um, but we'll, we are a resource if you'd like to get more information on who those folks are, where you can get that information, please do hit us up. Uh, also, I uh, serve on the Business Advisory Committee. Um, I'm a co-chair of the Business Advisory Committee, which also puts me in, on the Community Advisory Committee. And then I also hold a seat on the Corridor Management Committee, committee for the Blue Line Light Rail Project. So we are a resource for information. I'm happy to share what it is I know as I know it and the different things that um, are happening that I believe that we believe we should all be engaged in and the different sort of entry points as where you all can provide um, not just like your reaction to what is happening, but you can give really uh, direct feedback and information and insight to 
these larger entities making these decisions around what we would like this alignment to look like or not, right? So uh, uh, be sure to come from a place of trying to learn as much as you can about this and the impacts of something like this on our neighborhood so that you can make that informed decision around what you would like. And think about that as we're gonna also, uh, before you go, give us a moment before everybody logs off because we're gonna drop some links in the chat, um, some direct links to um, Met Council where you can go and you can give your insight for that public comment that everybody's talking about. We'll give you the direct link to that. We'll also give you a link to this interactive map, which I found really helpful as a visual person where you can go in, not only can you make comments, you can go to specific areas on the map in our neighborhood and you can make notations. So if one of these developments is something that you wanna make sure is preserved, put it on the map. This becomes part of their record of the things that they need to be taking under consideration um, with this project. And so those are direct ways you can give that feedback um, as she said, that public comment period has been extended thank, thanks to different folks on those committees advocating on uh, you all's behalf so that we can have that additional time. So let us know if it seems too fast, say that. If it seems, I mean, if you need more information about a specific thing, then say that. Um, if there are questions you have, ask them, ask them in that survey and ask them on that map. Okay, that's my little spiel for everyone, but we'll, we'll give you that information. And I see uh, folks putting their emails in the chat. Thank you so much. That is one way you can get connected. We'll grab that information and we'll send follow-up resources. Um, I feel like that is all I have, Brian. I, you know, before I could turn it over to you, you took it around with it, thank you. But let me say this to my, I'm saying this to my community. Uh, and that's, I'm talking to those of you who are uh, born and bred uh, North Side. Uh, let's 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 provide our input. This is this is so important. Uh, I know many of us have older relatives who may not be familiar with how to access uh, the information online, uh, but they will be impacted. Uh, you know, talk to your children. Uh, let's let's get the word out. This this is huge for the North Side, and we definitely need to be heard from. And so, and so this, our opportunity is now, let's, I'm, I, I, I don't normally beg no one other than my wife, but I am begging you Northside to please, please, please let your voices be heard. This is huge. This will impact our community in a way that has, it hasn't been impacted in a long time. So let's, let's, let's be a part of this. Let's get involved. Let's educate ourselves and let's make our voices heard. All right, that, that was my spiel. Felicia, I'll turn it over to you to close it out. Ashe, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Um, well, I've pretty much said everything I needed to. If you all are interested in uh, being uh, signed up for the email list for NEON or WBC to keep updated on our uh, Northside business luncheons and all the things uh, that our organizations do, please follow us on social media and uh, check out our websites. I know Maypa and the squad, they'll be dropping that information in the chat, both on the Facebook Live, hi everybody on Facebook, um, as well as uh, dropping that information uh, into the chat here on Zoom. Oh. We'll also send this information in a follow-up email to folks who have registered with the resources, the links we talked about, the organizations and the developments we've talked about. Uh, we'll get that information sent over to you all as well. Um, we have like four minutes to spare. Um, and I, that's all from me. I feel like if you all want your four minutes back, you can maybe head out and grab something to eat from Sammy's Avenue Eatery. Lunch is on us today. Uh, go ahead, Brian. Oh, I just want you to talk about Sammy Small's Business Re Revolution. Oh my goodness, yeah. Congratulations to Sammy Avenue, Sammy's Avenue Eatery. They were um, chosen for the Small Business Revolution. So um, in a couple of weeks, there'll be some cameras out on the corridor. Um, they'll take a tour of West Broadway to check out um, the businesses we have here. And this year's season of Small Business Revolution, they're gonna be focused on black businesses here in the Twin Cities, so Minneapolis and St. Paul. So make sure you all look forward to that. Um, I appreciate everyone who's attended today. If you, uh, I'll take us off of Facebook first, but if you want to unmute your mics, 
say hello, say your goodbyes, wave, turn on your camera, please do that. We have just a couple more minutes before I have to go. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. Hope you'll invite us back. So thanks. We sure will. So watch your Absolutely. Your email. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> you all for coming and being a part today. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Alicia. everyone. Thanks, y'all. Hey, Era, uh, Anna. I was uh, yeah. combining Anna. Hi. So, hi, Anna. Hi, Sarah. So good to see y'all. Good to see you, hello, too. Hello. Good to see you again, Candy. Good to see you, too. <laughs> Can't wait to connect and, and talk with uh, some of y'all. I'm Alexis uh, Camille. I'm over at the Minnesota African American Heritage Museum and Gallery, kind of a new role over there as community engagement uh, person. And my older sister, I was like, hey, I'm in this meeting. This is really great. You should come in here. And she's like, oh, I know these folks. Erin McKinney, Orin McKinney. She works for women. She's a CEO of Women Ventures. That's my, that's my big sister. She told me to say hello. Wow. Tell Erin I said hello. I, I will, yeah. It is such a small world, Alexis. Yeah, come yeah it home. is. <laughs> yes, ma'am. How are you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you as well. You guys so it's so great to see all you all's faces. Thank you all for joining in and tapping in to this important work. Um, I, I want to thank all of our panelists for um, offering their time, their insight, the information. Thank you all to our developers who are doing um, amazing work that great work, great. Um, has already received lots of community support. So we want to do what we can to make sure we push these developments forward preserve them and whatever happens with this blue line has to be in alignment with that so um yeah thanks everybody for joining i'm gonna stop recording we're gonna go now and uh we'll see you we'll see you all soon bye everyone